Now I come to the rationale between the two postulates of uh, statistical mechanics and the I already talked the ergodic hypothesis. So basic idea is that the, we do a huge number of interacting systems and uh, this section dimensional phase space that uh, uh, Boltzmann and Gibbs uh, developed, Maxwell did not. Now, so, so this motion, just the question you asked, motion is determined by forces and the instantaneous positions and intermolecular interactions. That is what Hamilton's, Hamilton's equation comes in. And so, the path followed by the representative executing their nature, this is very important, this Kubo's language, uh, we are a great um, uh, stat Mac guy called Rigo Kubo, their natural motion, so what we are following is the natural motion of the system in the phase space. So, trajectory is very important, no external force is there, okay. So, relation, then the, we want to establish now the relationship between such a microscopic trajectory. So, a trajectory is a microscopic thing and measure properties uh, and this is, I could do that, I could calculate the pressure, but if I could do Newton's equation, hold the system, then all the, I, if I could tell the atoms and molecules bombarding against the, just the way Maxwell did in, uh, in, in his uh, uh, ideal gas, you know, calculating the pressure PV equal to 130 mc square, I could do that, but unfortunately I cannot do that because I cannot calculate all these things, okay. That is why we are now going to do first we do a on some time averaging. This is the time averaging that I already introduced that we follow it for a long time. This is the kinetic energy mv square, the average over a time trajectory of each particle. This is exactly what I wrote down some time ago here. I am just kind of recapitulating the whole thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, a little bit of a problem, yeah that it should be, yeah, I think one has to do, yeah, this is always a problem, uh, okay. So, so time average from theoretical point of view, it is impossible to generate a long term trajectory of a microscopic system with large number of particles that I have been telling. So, we had no other option but to go to a probabilistic description, the one that I described. Fortunately, the probabilistic description can be developed with the help of only two postulates and one hypothesis. Uh, that is the beauty of the whole thing. So then that is in order to do that, uh, Gibbs came out, uh, Willard Gibbs came out with the brilliant, brilliant uh, um, mental construction of ensemble and uh, that was really amazing. Though it was, one should remember that he followed the same ensemble which Boltzmann followed, which is NVE. Yeah. So all these postulates, two postulates and the ergodic hypothesis are valid in the microcanonical ensemble. The NVE ensemble is called the microcanonical ensemble as we will do more later. So, so this is, uh, uh, so this is a, a language is that the kind of uncertainty or the imprecise is the same statistical description. So, if this is an important interesting thing again, I am uh, as I am saying re recapitulating, the concept of an ensemble is based on the realization that the system at equilibrium must have a very large number of microscopic states. This is partly probably probably uh, uh, query. The natural motion of the system at non-zero temperature takes the system through a finite fraction of the states. There is a very delicate question here which we will deal much, much later in a, in a time that is comparable time of measurement. It is very important, even when you are doing experimental measurement, we are going through a very tiny fraction of the total sample space, very important. Uh, and there is a concept of cell similarity and these things will come in to do that. Uh, measurement of micro body, if you now consider the system events at fixed energy at all these times, then the trajectory moves on a constant energy surface, that is the NVE. And according to the laws of mechanics, classical or quantum, and that generates the trajectory. But we do not need the detailed information, it is extremely important, we do not need the detailed information at least for the ensemble based equilibrium statistical mechanics that Willard Gibbs developed. 
we do not need there is again again saying but we need certain realistic understanding of this trajectory and realistic understanding of what we are uh, 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 talking of averages and I instead of taking the time evolution of the system or the microscopic states as required by Newtonian mechanics we constantly a huge number of states and as I am keep saying is NVE that is where whole this thing was set up but when going from NVE to temperature T is a little different thing. We have no control over microscopic states of the system and neither do we want to have any control we do not want them but we want them to flow over the phase space. That is why equal probability and ergodic hypothesis is important. The flow in the in, in the in the in the in the microscopic state in the phase space in the trajectory should cover a significant part of the system. Okay. So, ensemble represents a collection of mental replica and is called microcanonical ensemble. Trajectory system travels in a constant energy surface. All the points in trajectory are equally likely. That is what the as I said there are no other option uh, and, and, and good fortune of us that this works out ok. And actually it, it was still very doubtful for a long time even in even in 1950 there is a guy called who wanted to push Shannon entropy called James who wrote to Ullenbeck saying to making that ok because of your difficulties stat mac you should probably consider information entropy and this kind of as a mainstream stat mac. So, Ullenbeck gave the famous answer saying that uh, since the Lian Yang proved that one can explain statistical uh, phase transition within statistical mechanics we do not need your uh, Shannon entropy and that turned out to be correct we, we, we do, did not need that. So, complete trajectory of the system can be obtained if we cancel n body neutron situation that is the one partly we do when you do time dependent statistical mechanics that is the part of it. The trajectory we generate of the few tens of nanosecond and few interval of frame and we time interval we dump it even then huge data is there which comes handy sometime. So, this is kind go down with details of the understanding what how could be um, um, uh, the phase space can be quantified the smallness parameter turns out to be Planck's constant and we this analogy is beautiful uh, this uh, but I am not going to go into too detail on that. Right now I just want to say the following. So, these are the different kind of ensembles that I will do in the next lecture. So, the, the, the main uh, idea of this lecture is something which my what I, 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 I am intensely fond of is these uh, two postulates because I figured out to, a, to an extent the, the interrelation between the two postulates, the necessity of the postulates and the ergodic hypothesis only when I wrote the book. Uh, so, all these things can be connected and all this done was done by again it is very strange the person who does does everything like Maxwell did everything of uh, kinetic theory of gases all the equations that you do undergraduate. Schrodinger did all the same thing and then Willard Gibbs uh, did much of it uh, almost alone there. So, this time average and ensemble average we all did that. Uh, one thing uh, as this question was asked that when does why, why, why the problem is that this of course, uh, problem we worked out that if you have a system like that let us see it is stuck here this is a energy energy landscape and the particle is random executing random work here. And if it gets stuck here did we simulate it and we simulate it and we simulate it for years we could not get a converged result. And the guy who was doing or not stupid. Uh, that because this system as you get is larger then you face larger and larger barriers larger large deeper minima and you are thrown out of the track. We never got converged result this is the reason this is the thing you need the ergodic hypothesis. If ergodic hypothesis so this system is quasi ergodic later I found out that there is a famous paper when Human and Stein who said diffusion and this is a beautiful paper by uh, uh, I wrote with Seki San and Shoikot Banerjee uh, that on, on this, this this issue but we were really 
put on the right track by Newman and Stein, two mathematicians, Santa Fe Institute and Courant Institute, saying that one dimensional random, this is called random energy landscape, diffusion in one dimensional random energy license pathological in 1D. That exactly what turned out to be uh, correct. Uh, so, then postulate uh, the equal probability probability and then uh, each state is visited equal number of times, so it is very long time, the equal priority probability, every state is equally probable. And then the, of course, the, these two are connected, which is very, very important. Two postulate stress are to be supplemented by ergodic hypothesis. This hypothesis assures the practical validity of the first postulate. Without the ergodic hypothesis, your first postulate as you are asking is, is mute, okay. Mathematicians and physicists and this is done by books sometimes called Boltzmann Sinai because Sinai is the one who first proved ergodity for a, uh, um, a system of hard disks like billiard balls, but on a 2D he did that. Real proof is amazing, it is the Bubinovich and uh, Sinai, all mathematicians, you know, system of hard disks is a beautiful, beautiful thing uh, that was done and uh, so the argot states that during its trajectory in phase space, the system is free to explore all the microspace. It has to be free. Here it is not free. Uh, that guy is not really getting stuck there. So it has to be free, sufficiently long period of time, spends time in a state that is proportional to the volume of the state in phase space. That opens the room for NPT or NV NVT ensemble where energy now plays an important role. So it's like that. I think I think I will stop here today. Uh, the measure of ergodicity and all these things I am not going to go into, but uh, but I think today, yeah, all these beautiful measures are there. This is essentially done by Dave Thirumalai and Mountain uh, by doing the how it is connected to diffusion. This is given in my book. Uh, the all the details things and how you talk of diffusion is very interesting I, as I was telling one of my lecture here that you have to if you want to talk of many body diffusion whole system is diffusing then you, you, you have a, this kind of quantity that is what Thirumalai and Mountain used to show the breakdown of our Godicity as blast transition is approached but that means you are not talking of one particle you are thinking of whole phase whole um, configuration space of the system. All right, I think I think I'll. There are many other things, but I'll stop here. Mm. To recap, started with uh, we started with uh, probability and uh, statistics, central limit theorem, and several other interesting things. Then we went to phase space, we went to trajectory, and we discussed two. Next, what will happen? We will do starting with these postulates of. Uh, so, in my book, I talked about realization of promises. Um, we, 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 we now go from microcanonical ensemble to canonical and canonical ensemble. And then when you go to fluctuation, we start deriving the beautiful equations like uh, mean square fluctuation, specific heat and all these things. And then uh, the other, other systems will follow. Okay. Any, any questions? Sure. Right. Right, 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 absolutely. So, whenever you have orientation, uh, the phase space becomes larger. Absolutely. So, for example, when you are doing water molecules, you have the orientation. Sure. That, that you see uh, that at a level formal that does not pose any problem. The reason is that you just expand the you, know, you expand your notation x now has position and orientation and p will have now momentum all, all kinds of momentum angular momentum. So, angular momentum is one reason is that you know, it, 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 it decays very fast usually. Uh, so, uh, its conservation hardly pose a problem. For that one, momentum conservation is also does not pose too much of a problem in most of our calculations. Mm. Uh, but yes, it's, but the formalism part, nothing changes. See, see, this is a 
essentially like in Schrodinger equation, you write down a wave function psi, you do not know when you are writing down Schrodinger equation or a many body system, you do not think of solving it at that point, you are writing uh, and so all the, you know, all the theorem that you prove with a psi and everything that is just, uh, uh, it is just uh, formal, formalism to you whether it has particle in a box or whether interacting systems and electron gas, nothing matters. So, you have to, what I am saying, trying to say you have to separate out the formal part and separate out, I, I, I once in, I was a good friend of a friend called Jim Lill, who was developing a theory of scattering uh, with John Light, theory, a reactive scattering I think, called Lill Light theory. And he was all the time writing this very, very difficult equation uh, with uh, momentum, angular momentum, position. So, I always told him, Jim, how are you going to put these things? He said, Bhima, let me develop the formalism first. He developed the formalism, then he put it in computer and it became a very famous theory. So, when you are developing the formalism, you have to think of applications, but do not get bogged down by applications at that stage. So, yes, to you, uh, when you are write, writing down phase space or writing down um, these equations of partition functions, it does not matter whether your x has orientation or position. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to be able to think like that. You have to be able to think in a very formal way, but at the same time back of your mind you know when you are going to do applications, these formal things will become real things and that happens, that much faith you have to have. Science is always for optimist people, science is never for pessimists. I have already told you that this is the uh, third lecture, fourth will start with the partition function. Mm. And then we'll well, Liouville equation is there, but I might not do Liouville equation too seriously. Liouville equation is the equation that allows you to track, to generate the trajectory in phase space. This is a nothing but a Hamilton situation. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'll continue with the Verum ensembles. I'll go to fluctuation, and from fluctuation which is a wonderful chapter I tell you that from there we will do monatomic gas and diatomic gas, but everywhere it will be very practical like when I do monatomic gas, I will tell you, want to tell you about the use of that in modern day real life problem like protein DNA interaction, dark DNA intercalation and that has been used to do find out the binding of uh, uh, chemotherapy drug donomycin to DNA and then again we go to see the very interesting thing is that entropy comes with the monatomic gas beautifully, but the concept of rotational vibrational entropy, those are very important things. Rotational entropy in molecule usually 30 percent of the total entropy, uh, that comes through diatomic and then all your guys like the uh, normal modes your uh, the fact that CV is 3 by 2 R, all these things comes from just a diatomic molecule. It is amazing that how much you can know from doing monatomic and just diatomic. Then we will do Isaac model which is the first really. So, monatomic gas we will do non-interacting, diatomic we will do non-interacting, first time interacting system we will do Isaac model. Okay.